here once again. I'm Shannon and you're watching The College Thingy. Here joining me is Eloise. Hi Eloise. Hi Shannon. We've got an interesting show today focusing on Women's History Month. To get you caught up on the occasion, we have a segment explaining International Women's Day, which was actually celebrated on the 8th of March. Every March 8th, people around the globe celebrate International Women's Day. It is a day where we celebrate the social, economic, cultural and political achievements of women. The day also calls to commemorate the progress of gender equality. On February 28, 1909, the USA celebrated the first National Women's Day. But it wasn't until 1911 when the first International Women's Day took place in some countries, including Australia, Denmark, Germany and Switzerland. International Women's Day hasn't always been celebrated on 8th of March. This date came about as a result of the wartime strike by Russian women in 1917, which began on Thursday 23rd of February. It was finalised that March 8th would forever be International Women's Day by the United Nations. Sadly, not enough has changed for women since the beginning of International Women's Day, with the gender pay gap and ongoing inequality in job opportunities and healthcare still burning issues. Yeah. National Women's Day means that women that feel left out, I guess, in society can now feel welcome, I guess. It's a good day. It's very inspiring for me to have a day devoted to successful women. It's definitely still needed, not mostly in the UK, but in other places in the world where women don't have as many rights. We need to be fighting for their equality as well. It, it reminds us of what women have had to go through in the past, and it's good to reflect on the past. It's fantastic that we set aside this time to reflect on the history and achievements of women. Growing up, many of us are inspired by characters we see on screens and widespread representation of capable women has been very important. As film students, we couldn't resist putting together this collection of the best female-led films. Celebrate International Women's Day. Uh, we're going to be looking at some of the strong female characters in our favourite films and TV. Personal favourite of mine, being a massive nerd, is Rey from Star Wars for the latest three films. Uh, she goes from rags to riches, from uh, picking out scraps in Jakku to defeating uh, Palpatine on Exegol. And she honed her skills, became a Jedi, and now she's adopted by the Skywalkers. Although she's technically not a Skywalker, she's a Palpatine. But for movie purposes, she's a Skywalker. Other great women in films include Hermione from Harry Potter, Mulan, Sarah Connor from Terminator. Uh, we've also got such characters as Captain Marvel, who uh, was played by Brie Larson in a controversial film, but uh, a powerful character nonetheless. Speaking of strong female characters, we've got Lisa Lisa from Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, part two, Battle Tendency. She trains Joseph Joestar and Caesar in the usage of Hamon to defeat the godly Pillarman Right, so who would you say is your favourite? Well, my favourite female actor is Uma Thurman, who played the bride in Kill Bill and Mia Wallace in Pulp Fiction. My favourite would have to be Effie from The Hunger Games, because she's bold, but she stands up for what she believed in. And she's also quite feminine. I really like those characteristics now. Yeah. Quite one they, they're in great myself. and they're very impactful during the yeah. film for women. As well as celebrating female characters, though, we must also look up to the actual women who help bring them to life. Women's contributions are invaluable throughout most of the creative industry, from directing Hollywood blockbusters to creating art and hosting programs. Here at Create, we're interested in what it is like to be a woman in such a competitive workplace. I decided to head out of the studio and find out more for myself. In recent years, female representation, both in front and behind the cameras, has excelled. In 2009, Catherine Bigelow became the first woman to win the Oscar for the Best Director. Both Walt Disney Animation Studios and Lucasfilm are now actually being overseen by women. The Me Too movement has risen to prominence. Its goal is to protect these women from harassment. Still, however, only 16% of directors are actually women. Regarding the industry, 88% of female creatives believe they are lacking a role model. We decided to speak to Geeta Pense, a reporter and host at the BBC, 
to see how it feels to be a female in such a male-dominated industry. So how did you find entering the creative media industry as a woman? Yeah, I think as a woman, I didn't find that that was a barrier to entering the industry. Um, I did a postgraduate yeah. diploma in broadcast journalism, which was where I had my first sort of work placement. Yeah. And that led to my first job. Uh, and the programme that I worked on, so at the time it was BBC Breakfast in London. Mm -hmm. There was a real mixture of men and women of yeah. different ages. And um, in mm. that sense, I feel like getting into the industry as a woman you know, there was no problems for me. Yeah. I personally didn't experience harassment, um, you know, and I was able to enter the industry. But I definitely feel like there were moments when I was a young journalist and I look quite young for my age where I might have been patronised by yeah. some older male colleagues, um, which was frustrating. Um, and I think all of that now is really being questioned and being put out in the open how do you think more women could be sort of encouraged to actually join the industry? Women still, when they have children, are tend to be the ones that come out of their work, um, yeah. you know, to look after their children on maternity leave. Yeah. And then when they come back, they <clears> might be working part time. And so often there ha hasn't been uh, that ability to still help women and kind of grow in their careers too um, and so I think that's something that is being looked at now there's a lot more flexible yeah. working happening for women and I think probably, probably the pandemic in some ways yeah. might help because yeah. more people are working from home than they used to and if that's an option and it works for a woman um, then rather than it being something that's sort of a special request yeah. for it to be a more normal thing I think that's really important. Um, so who would you say is your creative inspiration? One of my inspirations is a presenter called Anita Rani. Mm -hmm. So she is British Asian like me. She grew up in Yorkshire yeah. from a family that you know had nothing to do with broadcasting, yeah. working class family. Um, and she's essentially really made a name for herself. And I just feel like she's very authentic and, and is herself. And I love yeah. that there'll be lots of people that would have seen her and thought, right, I can do that too. Yeah. So I think she's a real inspiration for me. I feel like we have come a long way from certainly the start of kind of the yeah. television industry. It was really unusual to see a woman um, either on screen in a kind of uh, powerful role, yeah. maybe as the kind of the number two, but to be like the main anchor. Woman. Yeah. Um, you know, that's something that we see so regularly now. It's, it's just the you know, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful yeah. for the future. The more diverse this industry becomes, the more interesting stories will be told. We must continue to support and to respect women in this industry. Speaking with Gita was certainly eye-opening. However, women excel in all sectors, not just in media. Let's now move on to the second interview with none other than Eloise Cantrell, a student at West Knox College studying music. All right, so first question, what inspired you to take music at college? Well, I've been a fan of heavy music for a while. I mean, I started listening to it when I was about 11 years old. Yeah. And I thought, well, why don't I sort of push myself to become a performer? Because it always sort of scared me a little bit. So I thought, I'll apply for the course and I'll try it. So I did. And I ended up starting out as a clean vocalist. And I thought, yeah. okay, well, I like heavy music. So I want to try something that's a little bit more impactful on the industry. Um, so I decided to start heavy vocals and it's really worked out well for me. Who would you say is your female inspiration? My main female inspiration within the industry is Tatiana Shmeluk. And she is a Ukrainian metal vocalist yeah. in a band called Ginger. Now, she sort of became big last year and I found her while I was scrolling through TikTok and I saw a video of her and I thought this is insanely cool. I want to be like her. Um, so she sort of inspired me to do it. And because she's in a band full of male members, it's really impactful because it's such a male dominated industry. Yeah. My favourite would probably have to be Paloma Viv because I'm really quite like, like weird, goofy. And unique. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. I, I completely agree with you. So in your opinion, how far have women come in the music industry? I feel like women have come very far within the metal industry, but I feel like there is still more to be done um, yeah. because it's so stereotyped that males have deep voices, so therefore they should be you know, in metal bands and stuff like that. 
Whereas women can give such much more of an impactful punch when they do metal vocals yeah. because it's different, if you know what I mean. So yeah, I feel like we've come very far, but we could go further. Thank you so much for answering these questions. All right, our next segment is a very important one. For years, there's been stereotyping in the media and in our day-to-day -day lives. Well, this is the 21st century, and so we want to break the bias. This next segment will tell us more on that. Break the Bias is a social media campaign fighting for gender equality. People would post videos or pics of them talking about a gender bias they would want to break. For example, women can't be powerful, or men must be fit and strong. But how powerful is the message? What is the effect that this hashtag has on younger people? This is Keon. No, I don't. The women belong in the kitchen. And this is Natasha. I do not. That women have to have a family to be happy. As you can see by our small sample, Break the Bias is not well known in the younger generation. However, they do want to change the gender bias that is in society. Spread the word. Break the bias. Do you personally know a bit about Break the Bias? I don't know, but that segment was very informative, so yeah. I'm glad I do now. <laughs> So next time you're on social media, why don't you search up the hashtag? We can all do our best to encourage people to be who they want to be and to do what they want to do. Talking about inspiring people, there have been some inspiring women throughout the course of history, such as Rosa Parks, who refused to, to give up her seat on the bus, or Greta Thunberg, who is known for challenging world leaders to take actions around climate change. My name is Edwin Sang. I'm currently doing a computer science course on the second year. Uh, I'm currently the student union president for West, Not West Nottinghamshire College in Derby. I believe the reason why there, is, there aren't as many female leaders are due to some factors such as gender stereotypes, confidence in their abilities, and what their environment was as childhood. Uh, one theme that I recall that impacted me a lot was a teacher from secondary school. She was really kind, she helped me a lot in my courses and she generally helped me into becoming a, deciding to become a, a computer scientist. I believe uh, one of the biggest impacts would be the women's suffragettes as they, they helped uh, allow women to vote, finally vote. I believe college is currently doing a decent job at it, though I feel like there could be a few more improvements such as getting a more balanced gender in terms of staff within each course. So, in your opinion, who is the most inspiring woman from history? From all of history? <sighs> <laughs> Bit of a tricky one, but... That is a tricky one, because obviously I'm so industry sort of defined into all right. one area. Who's your favourite one from history about music then? About music? I probably have to say someone big a bit like Adele I mean Adele's yeah. such an inspiring artist because she's so huge and so many people listen to her and she makes such an impact on people being themselves so would you consider yourself to actually be a feminist yeah yeah I would I, I feel like women's rights are so important being women and advocating those rights um I definitely see myself as a feminist and in your industry so music would you say it's quite difficult for a woman yeah, it's quite difficult within the industry because, especially with what I do, because, yeah. you know, men seem to think that, you know, because their voices are naturally deeper, yeah. they should be fit for the role of being metal vocalists. When in fact, if you learn the right technique, anybody can do it. Yeah. Anyone. So, yeah, I feel like, I feel like it should be advocated more within my industry. Women in history have come so far. Oh, thank you. Our suffragettes enabled us to have our right to vote and our women in power continue to do everything they can to close the gender pay gap. I'm proud of us, are you? Yes, most definitely. So thank you for watching, guys. Again, you can follow us on Instagram at The College Thingy Live and on TikTok at The College Thingy Show for behind the scenes content and your latest info. The links will actually be in the description below. I hope you have a fantastic week. Stay safe and I'll see you soon. It's goodbye from me. And goodbye from me.